took some really harsh jabs at Coma and then just got <laughs> shut down. <laughs> and fixed that trash that. talking was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. My favorite was looking at Coma's face when he was saying that. <laughs> he was so mad. He was like, you just wait. You just wait, kid. And then SKT did get the win. But we're right going into bands. LeBlanc being banned out against Goong actually from Kuro, although uh, Kuro does play a pretty good LeBlanc himself too. And the Zed, they really just want to try to limit Goog's champion pool, trying to... I think this is very wise. Yeah. I mean, Kuro, they're very different players. Kuro, not much of an assassin player. There's the Azir band, so uh, Kuro always known for that heavy control mage style, and Goog is the assassin player, so you're not really hurting Kuro, uh, Kuro's champion pool too much. Nar band will be going down. They may want to take Hecarim for Smeb. And what will the last band be? It will be the Cassiopeia, so... Whoa, okay, yeah. Didn't think we were gonna see Rise. Uh, Maokai possibly for that top lane instead of Hecarim. Both being very strong in the top lane still. I think you take Hecarim or Maokai here for sure. And that's what it's gonna be, Maokai. Nautilus being uh, pondered over. I mean, Watch had some really good mechanics with that Gragas, and Gragas definitely a top tier jungle pick yeah. right now for everyone. And Watch always has one champion that he can play, that he really prioritizes, mm -hmm. and we've seen a lot of that Gragas priority between teams, but the Nautilus is a bit interesting for Pure, and there is a very fast lock-in yeah. of a Lulu and a Rek'Sai, so we may see a return to juggermawing here from that. the Koo Tigers. <laughs> I mean, Spenu put up a good fight with it against SKT. We'll see if Koo tries to go back to their roots. So what is Koon going to play here? Because he doesn't have too many options. Remember, all I mean, the champions that he pretty much played in the opening series are gone at this point in time. Could play Cassidin, I suppose, but that's gonna be a little bit tough, I think, against Lulu early. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yes, I, yeah, I wouldn't really expect Go, the Yas. Uh, Ari or Cassidin. Ari seems really reasonable. I mean, Goon was known for his Ari too during his debut as Ari and Braggers making some really oh, big highlight reels. Ah, Okyu, welcome back to Young Sound Esports Stadium. <laughs> We missed you for the last couple of days, but... Or you play Vayne. I mean, I do love the synergy between Gragas and Vayne. Uh, isolating that target for Vayne can be very good, where she can burst them down quickly and then continue to tumble forward into the rest of the team once you have a man advantage. So, I like it. They've got a great pick comp going on now uh, with the Ari, with the Vayne, but their team fighting is going to be somewhat limited. As Gorilla, taking a look at that Annie right now. It could add for some really good hard to initiate for the Koo Tigers. I mean, they do have Maokai, but you want an AoE initiate and then lead into the Maokai with Wild Growth. That could be a pretty big combo, or even Rek'Sai with a Wild Growth. And if that's the case, yeah, I wouldn't expect something like an Ash. Blue oh. Sport. Oh, okay. All right, Vladimir mid. So mixing it up right there, they want the Vladimir just to dodge a lot of these Ari skill shots, and they're picking the Vlad into the vein as well because Vlad has a pretty easy time soloing Vayne. <laughs> as we saw, that is something that CJ had to deal with when they played against Anarchy, yep. where we saw Mickey just 1v1 dueling spaces Vayne and being very successful because there's really nothing Vayne can do once you pull the Condemn. And that sustain allows you to take some pretty favorable trades right there. And Ari not going to be too threatening to a Vladimir early either. They're pretty much going to have to push up. And are we going to see a top lane Nautilus? This is a, I guess <laughs> this is a thing today. I mean, <laughs> this is a thing today, I suppose. <laughs> Probably not is my bet. Are you sure? I think we are. I don't know. I had so much faith in it in the first match, and <laughs> they made me lose it. And here we are looking at top lane Nautilus. I mean. What is this world coming to? <laughs> Lulu on support. Top lane Nautilus this time around. That's a very punishing uh, lane, though. I mean, Lulu Lucian, just the autos from Lucian and Lulu alone are going to be really difficult for Najin to deal with with an Alistair Vayne combo. The trades are going to be absolutely brutal. Yeah. So if Najin doesn't get a lane swap here, I'd be very concerned about them. And the Tigers Kuro going to be playing that Vladimir this time. 
Kuro not one of the bigger Vlad players here in Korea overall compared to, to guys like Easy Hoon. So, see what he can do with it. Yeah, things could have changed during that downtime that Kuro had with the Koo Tigers after the finals. So we are looking at the lineups that we just discussed. Goon back on that RA2, that's pretty exciting. We'll see how he is after some time since we saw it last. And Duke with the top lane Nautilus. I mean, even with the lane swap, Nautilus will still have some trouble too, but at least then you can try to rely on OQ growing big and then not making silly mistakes later in the game as we prepare for game number one. Yeah, looking at Trace too with Nautilus, because he's been the one that I've seen see play at the most in solo queue, loving that wit's end on top uh. lane Nautilus, Nautilus just to get your attack speed up and taking full attack speed red runes as well. Well, we'll see what Duke comes in with. Game number one between Najini and Fire and the Koo Tigers for the second match of the day. Welcome everyone to match number seven of the summer season. You know what is pretty sad is to see how much smaller the support for the Najin organization has become from their fan club. They used to have one of the biggest fan clubs rivaling CJN just for a while in League of Legends. Kinda has died down, but Watch is still there <laughs> to keep a hold of the <laughs> Keep a hold of the fangirls, yes. Yes, he is. And Peanut as well. That's true. We haven't seen Peanut yet this season, actually. Yeah, maybe trying to... Uh, Brushed, uh, you know, brush up a little bit more. Maybe even uh, see if Watch can continue being a starter, perhaps. Oh, just some wards down right now. Najin really wants to get this lane swap off. And I think that they would be in a lot of trouble if they don't get it. Just because of how fast that lane is going to be pushed in, how much trouble, even with the Alistair heal, they will have in terms of keeping OQ in lane and farming, just with the passive from Lucian and Lulu doing a lot of work there. So, see what they can pull off. Rek'Sai will be starting on the top side. Looks like Prey and Gorilla happy just to be in the bottom lane right now. And we are going to get the 2v2, it would appear. Yeah. And they're trying to defend those saplings, actually. So, two, three saplings going down. Raptors will go over to Maokai, that means. Two, two, Saplings would be Vladimir, and three will be Maokai. So Smub going to take some of that XP right off the bat before helping Hojin, the player formerly known as Lee, on his Gromp. And the Najin duo coming into lane to, yep, just take some damage from the start, and that's how the rest of the laning phase is going to be for them. <laughs> this is a really brutal time for OQ, and I have to say, they do have a really good pick composition, but I question this repeated pick of Vayne. Uh, OQ just does weird things sometimes. He tried to make Twitch work at the end of last season to disastrous results, and Najin trying to go away from the meta a little bit, and they did win with Vayne, but I'm not gonna say they won because of Vayne in that last game. Yeah, I'd say it was somewhat far from it, to be fair. Uh, but we'll see if he can put up a better game this time around in the first set against the Q Tigers. And I like the Tigers' reaction to it, however. Just what they did, they, they used the Lulu as a flex pick there, weren't afraid to take that Vladimir as a result, and now they're still harassing heavily under this tower. Yeah, Gorilla really keeping up the pressure against OQ. That's wow. so brutal. And that's forced Pure to really just constantly be healing OQ. He's gonna run out of mana at some point soon in a wave, another wave or two if he has to keep that up. Yeah, the damage is getting down onto the tower as well. They're going to be losing some CS OQ already, a few CS down, and we're going to take a little bit of a pause, I suppose. Why not? Need a break early on, right? Yeah, it's been some time. It looks like possibly Kuro with a technical difficulty, but we will wait to get an update. OQ already looks very concerned. <laughs> well, he's like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming on, it's all coming back to me. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't even that impressed with OQ's vein mechanics in that game. His tumbling wasn't stellar. Uh, mechanically, he was a little off too with his QSS usage, pretty who's, slow. Whose vein was more impressive, OQ or space? Oh, jeez. <laughs> 
the, these are the 80 carries we deal with now in uh, Korea, Monty. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think if there's a good vein player left in Korea. I don't think there is. Um, Imp is gone. Imp is gone. Piglet's gone. Yeah, those, those were the two good ones. Yeah, and they really were good. I miss the days when Piglet would pick Bane and then just roam after and split push. Lane phase. Yeah, and split push forever. And then just go and gank for impact and get some kills. <laughs> Well, it looks like everything's solved, no matter what the problem was, and the players will be double-checking to make sure everything's all right in game as we jump right back in with OQ getting hit once again. And it looks like, actually, Gorilla going to back off from it, do some roaming here. Goog in the mid lane has to flash immediately. Hojin on the 330 gank and watches there, but Gorilla just tags him with a Glitter Lance so he can't join in from the side, has control of that speed shrine already. Not entirely sure, uh, since Hojin was already ganking the lane, um, what exactly Gorilla was looking for there on the roam. I think he was a little afraid that there might be a jungler a coming gank. in, a counter gank, so maybe he can... Uh, they were already pushed up to that turret, but yes, it did release some of the pressure on the spot side, allow OQ to catch up in terms of CS. But they'll, you know, they'll put it right back onto OQ and Pure. Shouldn't really be an issue. Uh, we do have Watch here in the bottom lane, though. With that relief, he's starting to just get right into that. And there's a flash on Freya and Hepa back. There's a body slam, and he's just knocked all the way back with the Condemn. He doesn't want to give the free kill to Okio at the tower, so he's just going to walk right back into the vein. And Watch didn't have to flash there either. Pure burning his flash right away. And they knew the Gragas was on the bottom side of the map, so they had wards on the chokes and on the river, but they didn't anticipate the lane gank right there, so... Pretty, uh, pretty bad mistake there from the Tigers playing up like that and playing so close to the brush and Prey making the error of dodging and didn't burn any of his summoners, however. Yeah, and OQ will get a nice start ahead in CS. Got first blood. Hopefully he can make something out of that towards the late game. Prey coming back just with double long swords as Oki does pick up that vamp scepter to keep him. Yeah, that was in huge, lane. huge in this lane that Prey and Gorilla were doing quite well in beforehand. They gave them the back too, which is probably the biggest thing because that allows Alistair to refill on that mana at the yeah. same time. So that worked out extremely well from Najin. Good gank by Watch. Yeah, Watch really seems to be on top of things as he's playing as he's playing the Scragus. We saw that in the opening match, and he's just going to get a little bit of damage down on Smeb too as he gets spotted. Uh, won't have a chance to clear that ward as the minions are chasing him down. I'm really excited to see Duke uh, play this top lane Nautilus. Like I was saying before, uh, Trace is the one who's doing it a lot in solo queue, and Jin Air is the team that tried it once to a not very good effect, but. In theory, this champion has so much lockdown potential, especially when you get a lot of items. Like I said, Trace usually builds full attack speed reds uh, for his runes, and then will get a third or fourth item wit's end just to get a maximum number of auto attacks down in a fight. Hojin uh -oh. looking for a gank. Hojin's really set up for this, and Smith is level six. Duke not level six yet. He's going to get caught with the twist, and Duke just going to have to use his ultimate to try for an escape. He's trying to use his flash after the dredge line, but not going to hit, so he'll save his flash for now. Meanwhile, bottom, a slight duel between the 2v2. Yeah, and in that gank too, Smeb had absolutely no mana left to follow up on that one. So you do see Rek'Sai having to flash there just to make sure they got sufficient damage down to secure that kill. Duke's not going to be too worried about it, though. He has his TP up. He's just going to TP right back to the turret. Not going to lose much in terms of experience or gold. And the kill also not going to Smeb. So yeah, it's like uh, Duke probably going to go Catalyst first and then build into Righteous Glory. Pretty expected on this top lane, Maokai. Or Maokai, uh, Nautilus. <laughs> he could go Rod, though, too. I'm curious. Could. Yeah. curious what he's going to do. Righteous Glory does seem a little bit more probable. And Pure helping out Watch clear out that pink ward, making sure he has an exit. As he provides some support there in the middle part of the map. And Najin setting up a lot of wards around that Dragon Pit. Possibly looking for an angle for Gragas to take that dragon if he finds a chance. Right, meanwhile, uh, mid lane, both champions do have their ultimates. 
We'll see if Goon tries to make something happen with the Spirit Rush. Probably not, given that his opponent is a Vladimir. Smev taking a lot of damage from Duke, so he'll just have to use his Vengeful Maelstrom to deny that duel. Still takes a little bit with the minions there on the side of Duke. Well, the XP advantage swung in favor of Duke right there, because even though we saw Smev hit six first, because Smev walked back to lane and Duke TP'd, uh, Smev got the TP advantage, but he is taking a little bit more damage as a result of his decision to hold on to that summoner spell right there. Both players getting pretty darn low though, and health pots in favor of Smeb. So Najin's do going to have to go back right away, maxing that E in lane as you do in pretty much any position. Yep, he actually just fakes it and then decides he's gonna ward up, assumes that Smeb will go back and he'll be back in lane farming. Smeb's still not gonna use his teleport. He's gonna have to now, I think. He doesn't want to fall further behind. Yeah, ah, you force it. That was actually a really clever move by Duke. Walk into the river right there, uh, fake that teleport out just to get the summoner. And now Smeb not going to be able to use that on the opposite side of the map to make a play. And Duke will open up about a two and a half minute window where he'll be able to use that board instead. Uh, the mind games. Yeah, that, was, that is really clever. While Hochin was in the bottom lane, looking for an angle, uh, not going to find it. So we'll. Not port back, we'll actually just walk back as he spotted there with the scrying orb from OQ. It'd be really helpful even to have those little tunnels like that though because it can, you can cover so much ground if Prey and Gorilla are able to defend that tunnel on the bottom side. As you can see, Gorilla just firing off a glitter lance there for some zone control. Kuro going to take the Raptors and really start to farm up right now. Already has that Hextech Revolver and he's getting into that point where Vlad He's really going to be able to start wave clearing in the next couple of levels. And the all-in potential from Ari is really difficult. I mean, Vlad is a great pick against Najin's composition because they need to make picks here. Their composition is all about making picks. And that most of their damage being single target. And Vlad is just, yeah. he's going to dodge the charm. He's going to dodge your CC and get away pretty easily considering he has two mobility summoners as well. Yeah, Kuro will kind of be the highlight for the Koo Tigers later on if we get into team fights. And of course, a lot relies on OQ here and, the, and his teammates to set something up for him to avoid those situations against Vladimir. So positioning later on, and of course, teleport battles between the top players will matter quite a bit. Hojin looking for an angle from behind Smab with Smeb too, and they're just gonna go in there. There's Spirit Rush, but it gets disrupted with the knockup. And Goon will just die to the Hema Plague from Kuro. Nice back off from the rest of his teammates, too, after the Hema Plague goes down. Yeah, Hoja not even having the flash there, but getting underneath with the knockup. Smeb choosing to flash on the roam, so had everything pushed up. Look at the vision coverage already down as well from the Tigers. That was a very safe gank to execute. Uh, they had eliminated a lot of those wards. Good pinks, and so clean gank right there. Gets Kuro a kill. And yeah. he completes his Will of the Ancients. And Goon opting to start this time with the Morello Nomicon. Probably, you would think, building into Luden's Echo next. Yeah, it would help a lot, especially inside Vladimir. is going to keep pushing up. Spirit Rush down for Goon, though, so he's not going to be able to exert too much pressure in the mid lane. Uh, Najin's still trying to take this chance to go for a solo dragon. Now, Oku going to also come up here. Even though the wave is pushing in favor of Ku, they left the lane, so they just want to try to make this dragon as quick as possible. And Oku going to leave in the middle of it as they deem it safe enough with no one being spotted right at the red buff from Ku Tigers. Yeah, Tigers just choosing to give this up, too. I mean, they didn't even use the Void Rush right there, and we just see Hojin going over and warding right now afterwards. So they knew what they were sacrificing in order to make that play, but they get a free recall. Meanwhile, Vayne still not in lane. Oku doing a great job of just keeping up in terms of CS. Already has that Blade of the Ruin King finish, so a nice advantage for him in this lane after that early gank was so successful. And Kuro getting a deep ward in against the Nut. Najin team. He's going to clear that bank. Gets hit by a charm, but not too concerned as his teammates show up. And Goon doing his job to clear the deep ward from Kuro with his lens. And there's just not a whole lot that Goon's able to do in terms of sustain in this lane either. He's going to lose out over time on these trades, even though 
he does have that passive that gives him a little bit of spell there from time to time. It's just Vlad is really coming into his own right now. This is where Vlad gets very strong, continue to push the wave, constantly chipping away at your tower. Goon trying to take those little raptors right there. Doesn't have time to finish the big one off, though, and that unrelenting pressure that Kuro's putting on, just walking right up to that minion wave and pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah, Kuro trying to start to extend that CS lead. Meanwhile, bottom, thanks to the early lifesteal from OQ, not as concerned about the Rass, although that kind of hurts now with the Glitterlands being upgraded. But now that he has the blade and he's got the Alistair heal, it doesn't really matter. He's going to be losing Oh, Kuro's caught in the middle. He already pulls, so there's a charm afterwards. A little bit of a misstep for him, going way too deep for wards against Najin. Yeah, especially without backup right there. Your bottom lane is pushed in. Hojin's just not there to help you out. So you walk into a blind jungle like that and you expose yourself to an all-in attempt. Ku Tigers did spot watch from the Dragon Pit, so they're gonna play pretty safely here in the bottom lane. Hojin also making his way down bottom in case they still go for a dive. Although we probably won't see that with the Lulu there for ultimate being live. And Hojin spots the red buff steal attempt from watch. Will he be able to stop it though? Pure is also here, so is Oku. And yeah, they're just gonna have to back off from that as Watch smites it. Oh yeah, some mistakes here from the Tigers early on. And this is where they struggle throughout the season. There are so many games that they would start out in a hole in the laning phase because their laning phase simply wasn't up to par compared to a lot of the other teams. But then, just due to great use of item power spike timings and good team fighting, they would be able to come back from behind and take a win. And it worked for them for a long time, but it's still a weakness that this team has that they haven't, I think, really shored up yet. At least looking like it in this game, making some mistakes in terms of getting caught out alone or not respecting where Watch is. Both of the kills from Najin coming from uh, not really thinking about where Watch could be at the map, even though they had some information. Really makes you wonder that perhaps the Najin in them never really left. <laughs> I mean, that's the way they played when they were in Najin. They would wait until those power spike timings. Also, when his expression was back on shield for Najin, we saw that a lot from that organization too. So it was a long time ago. I wonder what style. happened to expression. I think he still plays here and there. I've heard. I see him now and then in game uh, from other people's clips, but for now uh, we're back to farming in this game. Not much, and it is that Rod of Ages actually from Duke for that Nautilus. Yeah, I think usually Trace does go for the Rod of Ages first in this build um, and try and just deal a little bit more damage with Nautilus on the late game. And since I mean, Pure may be going for a Righteous Glory anyway, and Glory not actually the most necessary, I would say, in this composition. You have a lot of ways to pick somebody off already with the crowd control that you have and the mobility coming in from Alistair and from Ari, as well as Gragas. I mean, you closed those gaps pretty quickly, yeah. so. That makes sense. I'm gonna, I am gonna assume we are also seeing those attack speed runes on Duke, just given his animations in lane. Of course, we'll be able to double check that once the day is over. Uh, Hojin hasn't really been doing too much. I mean, he's had a couple successful ganks, but being relatively inactive, just farming away as Watch goes for the Rift Scuttler on the bottom side. Dragon is up in a minute and a couple more seconds afterwards. Yep, just more, more and more farming. It's been a very farm heavy day. Except yep. for that game two <laughs> with SK Telecom where they were mostly just farming Spanish champions. But <laughs> a little bit of a different story that time around. Game one made up for all of that. It's Abyssal Scepter actually next on Goon, so very concerned with these trades from wow. Vladimir actually. But that's, that'll delay a lot of damage from Ari. Will help with Nautilus' damage just a little bit and Gragas' as well. So perhaps yeah. in a team fight, they'll be outputting just a little bit more, but we're dead even in this game right now. But Najin having that completed Blade of the Ruin King, no Infinity Edge yet. And not really that close either for Prey. The teleport's up for both top laners. Dragon waits to spawn in 20 seconds. We were just trying to keep up the pressure in mid lane, but Kuro's not gonna let down either. 
Prey getting a nice war towards the river there to make sure they know exactly when Najin leaves the lane. Goes for the dragon. Hojin making his way back towards the bottom side of the map. Looks like both teams might start to gather a little bit. Oh, Gooing and Kuro getting in a little bit of a scuffle, but another one taking too much damage. Okyu trying to get pressured out by the Koo Tigers, but again, all that sustain we mentioned earlier. Nice chuck by Hojin. But watch, we'll just get rid of that ward. Probably sit there again. <laughs> Merc treads actually from Kuro as well, and against the composition they're dealing with it, this amount of CC, that's probably a wise decision. Good warding from both teams actually. No one with complete control over yeah. the pit yet. Not really any movement. It's no one is in a position to go ahead and take this at this juncture. Smeb already has the home guards. He has a chance right now to recall. Actually, gonna start punching a pink ward in the tri brush up at top side. Duke's gonna cut him off. Yeah, and Smeb, uh, yeah, he needs to watch which path he takes out of that. Might just have to walk back to lane as we see Goong starting to maybe make his way up top. Kuro trying to make sure he can follow if she, or if he does. And so no moves on Dragon. Both teams deciding that it's too dead even to take a risk. Let's try to wait until the other team makes a little slip up and Koo gonna take this chance after they push up the bottom lane to clear some of that vision here. The Dragon Watch is still nearby. Hojin might have sensed that with his Tremor sense, so he'll back off from the mid lane. Smeb just using Twisted Advance to come back towards his tower. Yeah, Duke really winning a lot of these trades, however. Yeah. And, uh, Smeb is trying to get uh, a Frozen Heart first to help deal with his vein, but it's not helping him in the lane at all. So his itemization not really for the laning phase here outside of those Merc Treads. Of course, with that Home Guard already up. He wants to fight this vein as soon as possible and really make her life quite difficult. Although what is good is that the Frozen Heart will limit some of the CC from Nautilus's passive. So it does yes. have some upside, just not in terms of the damage that is going to be coming in in these team fights. And Kuro just slowly farming his way. Already has the distortion enchantment for that uptime on his ghost and flash as well. And he probably is going to be working towards that Zonia's Hourglass, particularly against the Vayne at this point in time. But no real attempt at this Dragon. Smeb slowly losing control over his tower. Yeah, Duke's been keeping up the pressure really well. Abyssal Scepter also finished for Goong on the side of Najin. So both mid laners going back and getting some crucial itemization done before a possible Dragon fight. Goong also just picked up that blue buff, so Najin may be looking for an angle once again. They have gotten some vision in the river again, but it's been shared by the Ku Tigers and not too much behind the Dragon Pit. And there we go, Pure finally getting some vision behind there, but they're still just in broad daylight for the Ku Tigers if they start that Dragon. Goong tried to position himself first, and there's a teleport coming in from Smeb actually from home with the home guard. And he's gonna twist an advance onto watch this explosive cast to keep all of Ku Tigers behind. And Goong's putting out so much damage onto Kuro, he actually has to pull out, and Gorilla caught way behind the fight against Okyu. Meanwhile, Prey gets a kill, but Okyu's gonna clean up Gorilla and join the fight once again as Watch starts to chase Smeb. Smeb's gonna have to flash away from the charm, and that should be a clean dragon for Najin. And those little skirmishes where everyone is broken up is exactly the kind of fight that Dodgin wants. They want to duel with this Ari in the vein. And Goong did a great job of just dealing with Vladimir from the outside. Kuro not really able to do anything in spite of using both summoners right there, getting into the fight with just a sliver of HP. And I'm not even sure how Prey took so much damage on the outside, but I mean, Ku's composition, they don't want to engage where they are broken up. They want to be all together as a unit and trying to poke a little bit with the culling or get some Vladimir transfusions off before going in. So Prey right here tries to get the culling, but he gets smacked into a wall uh, and takes a lot of damage immediately. Duke is right there. Prey uh, takes the depth charge. What a great cue from Goog over the side as well, right as that depth charge hits. So nice skill shot from Goong, and Goong's play on this Ari, he basically took out both carries in that fight. Yeah, really good positioning and skill shots from Goong. I mean, we, we know that Goong is an amazing Ari player. That doesn't yeah. come as any surprise. He's been playing this champion for years at this point, uh, both in out of meta. I mean, he's famous for playing Ari even when no one else is. Yes, it's w definitely one of his signature champions since the beginning. But 
Uh, will they be able to do a lot late with this composition? Looks like Duke moving towards that frozen heart and Prey opting to do the Ghost Blade build on Dilution. He does prefer this build. He's one of the few players in Korea that does like to pop that Ghost Blade and really maximize his culling damage. Kuro uh, choosing to take that blue as Hojin also doesn't really need it with, on the reg side. So might as well get the cooldown for himself and the experience, but Goon's gonna take that chance to shove down the tier one in mid a lot, and Kuro having taken maybe a little too long at that blue buff, Goon's just gonna go ahead wow. and take it. A charm for the escape. I mean, the game's still really close, but Najin has that slight advantage in terms of gold, but really it's the dragon advantage that they're going to be quite happy with here. So Hojin trying to show up in mid lane, but watch is right there for a counter gank, and Hojin's gonna spot him with the tremor sense. He's gonna clear that ward right away with the help of his pink for the Koo Tigers. Najin's starting to feel pretty good about this game despite the I would, of difference in gold. I would still be worried about Najin if they engage in true 5v5s in the late game. Now they have the tools to to force these skirmishes. I think the Nautilus ult, uh, another thing to lock somebody down to give Ari and Vayne time to burst, but Ku is gonna get really tanky with the ultimate as well from Lulu on the support pick, so they may be able just to ride out the burst from Ari, and if that's true, then the vein should be a pretty easy target to go for. All right. Duke's still trying to put up some pressure in the top lane, but Smev's doing okay for himself. A little behind in CS, but has a clean 0-0-3 score. Bottom lane has been pretty much the same for some time. Uh, Oki did fall a little bit more behind in CS, but still able to farm up what he needs with that sustain from his items and of course his support on Alistar. And I'm curious if Goon's gonna go for the Echo as his next item. I think that is the best option that he's going to have. Kuro really, really needs to get that Zonia's Hourglass so he's not in the same situation that he was before where he has to burn pool before getting into the fight. I mean, you, need, you really need both of those abilities to get another round of cooldowns off over the course of a team fight. And especially against some of these single target assassins, it's going to be very useful. Does he have enough money at the moment? And he does, so All that's right. a very important buy. And then more magic resist with the null magic mantle. Yeah, it's probably going to go Abyssal next. Be very defensive, at least for the moment. I mean, that'll, once you complete that, that'll help your team quite a bit too with Maokai and Lulu there. And Smeb charging towards the bottom lane. He does, he will have teleport by the time he gets there. So if he needs to go to top, he'll make it. Looks like it might be a four man gank and bottom. They were kind of sacrificing one tower for this. So they're gonna have to get a, a whole lot. lot off of this dive, but he's gonna sneak right into that brush. And you can see Prey setting this up with the culling, just eliminating that wave. And they've got to, they got to go on this next wave. Yeah. Oh, Prey taking so much damage. The pure jumps in. There's a heal. Prey is he gonna go down first? There's a wild growth to keep him alive. But here comes the teleport from Duke as he lands. And there's the home guard. He's gonna charge towards Prey. There's a depth charge. Prey will be pretty far from the fight. But watch comes in, explodes his cast, and there's a dredge line from Duke to pick up the kill. Goong is now here to try to turn things even worse for Ku, but they will back off. They already got two kills. Notch and Ian Fire turning things around. That was such a good response from Nodge and to be aware that that play had the possibility of coming in. Now, Prey did telegraph that a little bit, and he took a ton of damage down to about a third HP before we saw the follow-up. So I think a little bit of miscommunication and uh, miscoordination there from the Tigers as they tried to get that one, but instant teleport at that same time from Duke to react. Oh, and here comes Watch for another dive. It is a Maokai and a Lulu, but no wild growth. And there's no minions left, so Najin will just have to back out. Watch is gonna take some extra unnecessary tower damage, but he'll just be able to body slam out at the end there. And Kur also making his way down. He's gonna lose some minions on the turret for that though, but Goong also really on top of that one, having the Spirit Rush, and he already had opened up the map due to taking down that mid turret, and they've got so many wards in the bottom side, just very well played by Najin. If we take a look at this one again, I mean, Guggen Watch are already moving down here at this point. There's the heal on the Bray and the Wild Growth. 
that he's just not able to deal enough damage to Pure during his ultimate to make it worthwhile. Dashes out, flashes out, gets knocked up, and look at Watch. First off, what a great wow. mechanical play by Watch there. He flash body slammed into the Rek'Sai and then knocked both Lucian and Rek'Sai to the side. And also Prey walking too close to the brush to allow the three-man knockup from Pure to start things off. Really gave OQ a little bit more time to keep that distance from Smeb from the surprise gank. And Najin trying to lead this right into a third dragon. They do have a pretty big advantage. Smeb just trying to deny that by taking that tier one at top. He does have teleport. But will he have an angle to port in? Doesn't look like it. So Kuh Tiger's just a slight passive attempt at stealing the dragon. Not going to happen. And Najin now with three stacks and six kills to three. Yeah, this is still a very close game in terms of gold there. But Najin really starting to run away. These dragons are going to become all important in the next few minutes. And I'm not sure that the Tigers are going to have enough time to get tanky enough. Now, they're all going to group right now, try and use Lucian to clear the wave and take the mid lane tower. But there's too much defense right now from Najin Emfire. And Nautilus will be joining as well from the side. And the members of the Tigers are in a very flank vulnerable position right now. So they will have to back off. Oh, Hojin actually gets caught. Condemned to the wall. And there's a body slam explosive cat. There's a depth charge on Dupree. He gets caught way out of the fight. And Goon with another kill on the scoreboard. And Najin will walk right towards Baron at 30 minutes. Prey's positioning this game has been really suspect. Uh, he's taken some trades and, and taken some deaths that he shouldn't have. He was trying to help out right there after Hojin got caught, but that's a huge Baron for Najin, who is looking like a much tighter team than we saw earlier this week when they fell to Anarchy and were kind of all over the place in terms of their play style. They were just really on top of, look at that combo. Hojin just has no chance in that, that situation. Cast. And Prey knocking him over as well, but I mean, Watch has been great on this Gragas, that's for sure. He won that MVP in Najin's first game, and he's making a, he's really doing well tonight. I That play in the bottom lane where he turned that gank around was particularly impressive. Now the last Whisper complete, QSS done. Wow. I'm not sure anything's going to be stopping OQ at this stage. Yeah, things look really good. Of course, already three stacks of Dragon 2. That movement speed is going to be pretty big. In these fights where OQ really want a kind of a messy fight in their advantage. So like you said, Koo Tigers will need a lot more time, probably at least 10 or 15 more minutes to make something completely in their favor in game one of this series. Watch just gonna tank that for a little bit, allowing OQ to take the tier one and bottom, winding that gold lead even more in favor of Najin. Yeah, Najin really showing up. Now they didn't have the staying power down the stretch after winning that first game with a similar composition of mid assassin versus uh, and Vayne when they played up against Anarchy. So we'll see if the Tigers can bounce back a little bit because I like their composition here, but it, there's been a lot of misplays, a lot of timing errors from the Tigers, just not very clean in terms of setting up ganks or communicating where Watch is on the map. And the culling really not doing much against the already very tanky watch. And Oki's just going to safely take that tier two. And so is Duke in mid lane. Pressure in two lanes all together here for Notch and some pings in the top lane. So we'll see if a couple of the members of Notch and rotate up there while the others keep up the pressure in mid. Or if they'll just all move up there and push down towards that tier two while taking control of the jungle. Yeah, I think they just want to complete their conquest of the inner ring of turrets before moving further. Might as well play this one methodically. They do have this great advantage. And Goong actually going for a death cap. Been surprised about that one. Yeah, he did finish that after that big fight down in the bottom lane. Goong so looking for a charm, not gonna find it. Just preferring that extra damage uh, overall. Yeah, the thing about it though is with Spirit Rush, you have so many opportunities to proc that Luden's Echo multiple times over the course of a team fight, so it ends up being a pretty efficient item on Ari. And here we go. Just moving all the waves up right now. OQ doing a little bit of split pushing. They have to answer with the Vlad, but it's nice that Ku at least does have an answer to a split pushing vein. Yeah, Frey, whoa, dashing forward, trying to 
just be confident in the fact that OQ needed some time to join up in that bottom lane so that Najin EM Fire was not looking for a full on fight. And so Najin will just back off. They got some damage onto the tier two and top. They'll be able to revisit later. Pure using that poor Scuttler. That's just the place to jump over the wall into the river. Yeah, they want to go for this fourth dragon right now. They want to put the timer on this game when they already have a substantial gold advantage. And if you're if you're the Tigers, I think you gotta take this Gragas away from Watch. I think that's been the key. We've seen how much they prioritize this pick. And Watch is too good on it. The Maokai for Smeb has been working a little bit in the top side, and they did manage to grab that early kill onto Duke, but it just hasn't had enough of an effect on the rest of the game. And Smeb, you know, he went for the early home guard boots here, but they never really made a play with it. Yeah. Well, never really had a need for it at all, given that Najin and Fire always taking the first step in these fights, and Najin coming in for an invade, but Prey will finish that pretty quickly. He does have a Last Whisper himself on top of his other two items. So it's not that Prey is necessarily lacking in damage, although OQ is a BF sword ahead of him. Well, he's still going to have a hard time dealing with Duke. Duke is super tanky right now. Just going to get a little bit of lockdown into Smeb. He does get Charmed, and he already had to use his ultimate. And oh, they're going to push him right back in with an explosive cask. And Oku is now here to start the damage on whoever's in front of him. He's going to now latch onto Hoshin. And then Kuro Kuro not able to stick to them. Meanwhile, Duke's going to keep Smeb zoned while Goong picks up a kill onto Gorilla. And Oku just chasing Kuro down. Not going to have an answer for that vein. Oh, there's the Zonias. Uh, but there's a tumble, and Watch is going <laughs> to steal that under from OQ's nose. And Duke still just keeping Smeb at bay, but with way more health. And Watch just <laughs> with a barrel Smeb, from the side. Smeb is just healing with his passive right now, faster than Duke could actually damage him. <laughs> so <laughs> needs a little bit of a helping hand there to finish off the kill. Now they're going to get that dragon number four, going ahead and prioritizing that. OQ can solo push into the mid inhibitor at the moment, only Hojin there to stop him. So pretty clean game from Najin right here, taking every single dragon so far. And the Tigers not having too much of an answer to some of Watch's jungling and Watch's really fantastic explosive casks over the course of this game. Yeah, 2-0-9 with some. Yeah, nearly 100% kill contribution, taking a look at this one again. So Smeb gets caught out, then he gets isolated. This is exactly the kind of fight they need. Look, they punt the, the Vladimir out. He's been ghosting this entire time, and he only, at the very end, managed to get a few attacks by, down. But by that time, he's alone with Vayne and a whole boatload of crowd control <laughs> in the back line. I mean, this composition is being really nicely played out by Naja. They're getting the fights they want. And, but that said, They've been playing this style in the games that they have won so far. It's only been two. I assume they're going to win this one. But when they don't have Gragas and they're reliant on this Vayne and an Assassin pick, uh, is it going to be able to be pulled off? My my guess is no. Right. Uh, the Gragas explosive cask has really been instrumental to getting Vayne and Ari in these 1v1s. And like you said, that's always been the case for Watch, too. He always has that one champion that he can really make a big difference on for his team and that kind of center, that's the centerpiece for their whole team's play style. We'll see if Najin has adjusted some of that coming in after a big loss to Anarchy on opening day. We have uh, Thorn Mail now for Duke, too. That's a lot of damage on that shield. Yeah. Oh, and a nice stretch line up to Smeb once again. The culling already used up, and Smeb just cannot move with all this CC coming in. He does jump onto Oki, but there's a QSS. Wow. A three man knockup coming in for Najini and Fire, and Kuro can't do anything as Goon dances around the sides of the fight, and Najin with a quick ace against the Koo Tigers. And there we go. Finally, the kill goes over to OQ. OQ 5 0 and 6 had a strenuous couple of minutes early on in lane, but it was turned around very quickly, and now they should be able just to push forward for the win right here. Long death timers in this game, and they have a minion wave to make it work. They're just gonna be able to tank it out. They've got this very tanky Nautilus to deal with these Nexus turrets, and that's gonna be it. Najin really rolling to a game wow. one win. Well, very well played. I mean, they executed their composition as it should have been. And a little bit more surprising might just be the fact that the Koo Tigers seemed really shaken up in that first game. 
Yeah, they. I think they had a good draft to deal with this too. They had an answer to the vein split push. They did some interesting things in the picket band phase to make sure that they could deal with what Nachin was throwing at them. But it's just, it was a lot of mechanical and positional misplays from the Tigers. They got them really far behind in terms of gold. And at that point, Najin just had their way in those team fights, isolating people for OQ and Ari and uh, Goong to, to burn down. And